If you've been subscribed for a while, you'll know that I have a special interest in complexion. I am totally obsessed with skin. I've tried countless foundations over the years. I'm always looking for the foundations that look invisible on the skin. I want my foundation to look like skin. I want it to even out any redness or discoloration. I want it to even out any pores and texture and I want it to last well throughout the day. I'm aware that these this is a tall ask, but I have eight foundations here that fit the bill exactly. Eight of my favorite foundations of the moment. I'm gonna add some information to the description box about my skin tone and my skin type, but in a nutshell, uh, my skin type is normal to dry and my skin tone is around the NC25 in MAC terminology. That's like a global benchmark, right? Hopefully that's helpful. So maybe we can do this uh, by occasion. So let's say I was going to brunch with the girls on the weekend. I would wear the Fenty uh, Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint. So this is actually a recent release from Fenty. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting to love it. I was pretty uninterested at first because a lot of the Fenty foundations kind of miss the mark for me. But this one is so far up my alley. It has a sheer, maybe medium coverage. It's kind of like one step above a tinted moisturizer, if you can imagine that. I've applied it with fingers, I've applied it with a sponge, um, and it's got that real kind of chill, easy weekend kind of vibe. So true to the name blurring, this formula is super smoothing. It's, it's just like packed with dimethicones. You can really feel that slippery, velvety texture between your fingertips, which is the, the hallmark of a silicone heavy foundation. Because it has that kind of like velvety, slippy texture, I find that it doesn't really build on itself well, right? After like one or two layers, you're not really getting extra coverage. I think this one is meant to be worn sheer. The finish I would say is a, is a satin, so not too dewy, not too matte, kind of works on a lot of skin types. Uh, and I believe that this, uh, this formula is alcohol free as well, if that's something that, um, that you look out for. For me, the, like, the big factor that really got me on board is the shade. I have a decent shade match in this foundation. Hallelujah, I don't have to mix. The shade six is a muted olive shade that just, oh, it really kind of meshes all the different tones in my body, my neck, my chest, and it gives me a cohesive look. So for my olive uh, people out there, number six. I actually did wear that to brunch on the weekend with the girls prior to lockdown, and it performed beautifully. All right, next occasion. Let's say we are going on a night out. We're having cocktails. It's a glam night out. Uh, for that purpose, I would be reaching for the YSL Touche Eclat Foundation. This has been reformulated a number of times over the years, but I got to try the most recent formula in my Shop With Me video, which I'll link on the screen. I had so much fun filming that. And I am blown away by this foundation. The coverage is really great. I would say actually out of all the foundations today, this might have the most coverage. Um, it's got a good medium buildable coverage. You can shear it out a little bit if you like it sheerer, or you can build it up to a little bit more of a fuller coverage if you're looking for uh, that kind of opacity. Um, it's super smoothing. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. It makes my skin look absolutely poreless. Even the kind of pores on my nose are just completely concealed. The longevity is also fabulous. I wore it for like 10 hours and at the end of the day, I was pretty bowled over by how fresh um, and clean my complexion still looked. When we talk about longevity, we're referring to how long the product lasts on the skin, but I'm also concerned about longevity in terms of how elegantly it wears throughout the day. So like, does it get dry and crusty around the mouth? or uh, does it separate uh, on the oily areas of the nose? Does it settle into the smile lines? Um, I'm also interested in that, and this foundation does none of those things. It just wears so fresh and so beautifully, epic longevity. The finish I would say is satin, maybe leaning matte. Um, this one is probably the most matte of the formulas that I'm talking about today, and it really has great setting action. It doesn't remain tacky on the skin, so I don't even really fi find that I need to powder. So yeah, if you're looking for a glam, long-wearing uh, foundation that still looks like skin, touche clat. Touche clat, like an Aussie. All right, next occasion. Uh, I'm in a rush. I have risked my entire career for an extra eight minutes of sleep, 
And for that occasion, I would reach for the Sukyu Nude Wear Liquid. If you're not familiar with this brand, Sukyu, it's uh, like a mega luxury brand from Japan and everything they do is so tasteful and elegant and exquisite, like real works of art and their color stories are so beautiful. And when I went to Japan, I just couldn't help myself. I just kept going back to the counter over and over again. And I'm sure that the, the sales associates there thought that I was totally out of my mind and I am, I'm crazy for Sikyu. So this is one of those kind of dropper style, very, very fluid, watery kind of foundations. Um, and a lot of these volatile oil types of formulas tend to be uh, very flat and matte. If you remember like the Dior uh, Nude Air, the Armani Maestro, very um, matte and they set down very quickly. Whereas the Sukyu uh, Nude Wear is, it gives you that beautiful light, lightweight, weightless uh, texture uh, without it being like a super flat matte finish. It's got a little bit more of a satiny kind of vibe. And because that consistency is so thin and lightweight, it blends like a dream. Use your fingers, use a sponge, use a brush. It's done in like two seconds flat, which is why I tend to reach for this one when I'm in a rush, when I'm running late, which happens more than I care to admit. I don't know why I'm always three minutes late. The coverage is sheer, not quite a medium. I would say this is definitely on the sheerer side, your, your tinted moisturizer style of product. But perhaps I think most impressive is how weightless this product is on the skin. I totally forget that I'm wearing it. It really is like a second skin finish. Uh, I do want to give a quick honorable uh, mention to another Suku foundation. This is the Suku Extra Rich Glow. Uh, this is uh, a cream foundation that is has really full coverage, but it's so emollient and creamy. And I think it's rare to find that. Typically full coverage foundations tend to be a little bit matte and crusty, but this one really remains pliable and creamy on the skin. And I just have to mention that. If you're looking for a full coverage foundation and you don't mind a little bit of a splurge, the Suku uh, Extra Rich Glow, I mean, they're both amazing. All right, next occasion. Let's say we're going to a wedding. Whether you're the bride, you're the bridal party, you're the mother of the bride, you're a wedding guest, you're probably looking for some sort of uh, photogenic foundation and this would be my pick. Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. You guys know I can't do a video about foundation without talking about Luminous Silk. This was one of the first foundations that I ever owned. I'll tell you the story. When I would had my uh, prom slash formal, my mum took me to the local department store. We went to David Jones and she doesn't know anything about makeup and I was like, yeah, that counter looks good. And it happened to be Armani. The Armani lady applied um, lots of products on, on me, some of them questionable, but both my mum and I were so wowed by Luminous Silk that we both went home with a bottle that day. And that was 15 years ago. My mum still won't use anything but Luminous Silk. I tried to get her to try some other things and she's like, nah, I only want my Luminous Silk. And honestly, I get it. This stuff is bomb. There is just something special about Armani Luminous Silk. I'm actually wearing it today. Um, it's one of those products that every time I wear it, I look closely in a mirror and I just can't see. It doesn't look like foundation, it looks like skin. And that is one of the most important foundation aspects to me. I'm happy to compromise on other things, on longevity, on even shade, but I need my foundation to look like skin and this stuff does. In terms of coverage, it's like a good middle of the road, right? You've got that medium buildable coverage, that satin finish, not too um, dewy, not too matte. This foundation has become cult uh, among makeup artists. I think uh, the shade range is vast, which is great, uh, but also it's just the most photogenic foundation on the market in my humble opinion. So whether, again, you're the bride, you're the bridal party, you're a wedding guest, you're mother of the bride, maybe you're just someone who likes to take photos of your face, I can relate. <laughs> Despite that vast shade range, I, lol, don't have a good shade match. So I actually find myself mixing. I mix the shades four and six primarily. Um, the shades in between just run a little bit peachy um, for my liking. So I get a decent match uh, mixing those two shades. The one con that I can imagine, uh, there's a few cons. It's got alcohol in this formula and it's a very expensive foundation. Uh, also, if you have a very oily skin type, uh, I think this might not last as long on you, in which case I would be layering it over a mattifying primer. Don't powder it too heavily. I think that that kind of destroys the beauty. 
A big thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you're not familiar, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes from cool creatives who are generous enough to share their craft with us. Maybe you wanna draw realistic humans or photograph a cheese board. Skillshare has a class about it. My latest uh, Skillshare discovery is by Tabitha Park. Find your photography style, create consistent photos. So I'm always trying to better train my eye to read photos, and that's exactly the focus of this class. Tabitha walks us through various photos to determine how they're lit, what equipment was likely used, uh, how to edit those photos in Lightroom to achieve that particular mood or style. And if you're like me and you're wanting to create a more consistent Instagram feed or a portfolio, this is a fabulous resource. Actually, all of Tabitha's classes are A+, much recommend. So if you're also looking to flex your creative muscles, then click the first link in my description box. The first thousand people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can try before you buy. Thanks again, Skillshare, back to foundation. All right, next. Look, there are just some days where I wake up and I say, I want to be the glossiest me that I can be. And for those occasions, I reach for the Air Perez Oat Milk Foundation. If you obsess over juicy skin, shiny cheekbones, glass skin, editorial shine, you are welcome. I love the tube. Um, this is my favorite foundation packaging. And the texture actually is quite thick. Um, it reminds me almost as like a cream foundation as opposed to um, a liquid formula. And when I first played with it, I thought, oh, that's kind of thick. Uh, I thought that maybe it might look a little bit heavy on the skin, but I stand corrected because once this is blended in, it does this gorgeous like melty thing where it just like melts into the skin and you cannot see any pigment visible on the skin whatsoever. It's glorious. So Air Perez describes this as a medium to full coverage and I think that we might have different definitions because I would call this a sheer to medium. You can continue building it upon itself. You can go in with a second layer, but I find that it starts to get like excessively glossy and slippy and slidey and greasy. It's, there's sort of like a limit to which um, you can build coverage. And then if I want anything, ex any extra coverage beyond that, I can always go in with a little bit of concealer. I think it's a little bit of a crime to powder this foundation. Um, maybe a little bit like precision powdering around the mouth, under the eyes, but I think it's most beautiful when you let that raw, glossy finish shine. I'm actually really excited about this brand, Air Perez. It's available now um, in Mecca and it's Australian owned, which is awesome. I would like to see some more shades in this lineup. An on the go option, uh, maybe you're traveling or perhaps uh, you need like a handbag touch and go option. I would be selecting their Maya Mani to go to go cushion. So I have spoken about this incessantly now for two years. It's a holy grail foundation. I get a little bit sheepish when I talk about it because I sense that I'm kind of almost like going into the same sentence that I've said so many times before. I'm gonna keep this brief. This is my favorite cushion foundation that I've ever tried. It makes the skin look really plump and juicy and healthy. That's what people tell me when I wear this foundation. Oh, you look so healthy. You know, maybe she's born with it or maybe it's Armani. This foundation doesn't have like a strong setting action, right? It kind of remains a little bit movable and pliable on the skin, which I consider to be a pro because at 4 p.m. after I've taken off my glasses and my makeup's looking all a bit smudgy and gross, I can just take a little bit extra and smudge everything back into place. Um, it's, it's really great for touch-ups. The coverage is surprisingly good. It's got a medium buildable uh, coverage, good for daytime, good for nighttime. The finish is quite dewy and the longevity, as I said, is kind of so-so because it doesn't really set on the skin. The cons, it's so expensive. Oh, what an expensive habit I have here, especially because cushion foundations, you tend to go through them really quickly. And also, I'm not sure if this is a geographic thing, um, but the shade range sucks. All right, next occasion is a broad mood called No Makeup Makeup. I often find myself in this mood and a foundation that I often reach for is the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. I do have a whole video, a big video, uh, breaking this down, which I'll link somewhere on the screen, but I'm just besotted with the way this foundation looks on the skin. It looks like fresh, 
bare skin. I cannot see um, any pigment kind of sitting on the surface of the skin. Uh, it doesn't sit in pores. It just looks like fresh bare skin. And so I often find myself reaching for this when I am doing like macro photography uh, or no makeup, makeup looks or any kind of real skin centric look. This is my guy. The coverage I would say is on the lighter side of medium. The finish is on the dewier side of satin. And I think one really impressive thing about this foundation is that it has fabulous longevity, even if you don't powder it. I think that's pretty impressive, a dewy foundation that lasts well even without powdering. There are some downsides. There's some sort of like film forming technology going on in here that leaves like a tacky finish, a bit of a sticky finish, which I think might annoy some people. Also, it has a little bit of a tendency to settle into lines and folds, like smile lines, um, more so than uh, a lot of my other formulas. And also, most notably, perhaps, there is a, a learning curve with the application. Um, after much trial and error, I found that I liked it most when I quickly pat it on with fingers. But if you fiddle too much or if you go to layer another layer, it has a tendency to lift upon itself. All of this, all of this is worth it for that juicy, bare, fresh skin, no makeup, makeup, macro photography, worth it. I've got a foundation for a sick day. Look, when you're an adult, sometimes you just feel rotten, you feel sick, but the show must go on. And for those occasions, I reach for the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder. I rediscovered this in my collection recently and I just fell in love with it all over again. So this is another sheer to medium dewy finish foundation. <laughs> um, but this one I think is uh, really unique because it's so rare to find a liquid foundation that feels this creamy and this nourishing. It doesn't collect on dry patches as you often sometimes get around the nose, around the mouth when you're sick. Um, it just really kind of glosses over any texture. It glosses over dry texture, I should say. And I really adore the way that this wears throughout the day. It doesn't get crusty or it doesn't separate or split on the skin. It just slowly fades away in the typical areas, but I'll often reach for this one actually if I'm having a long day because I know that it's not going to do anything awkward. It's not going to like do awkward things. It's going to wear away in a more elegant fashion. I picked this one for the sick day because there is something brightening about this formula. It's like this, this kind of intangible thing that I can't really describe and Charlotte Tilbury really nails it. The flawless filter has it as well and the light wonder, this certain like lit from within kind of glow um, and the perfect, I think, antidote to a sick day. I know this video very much focused on high-end foundations and that's because I would like to do another video dedicated solely to uh, drugstore foundations. Okay, now I need your help. Uh, tell me in the comment section down below, what is your favorite foundation of the moment and what is your skin type? Because I am going to make a new wish list. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you did. Uh, also come say hello to me on Instagram at Kareem and McKimmy and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye.